Welcome to this video on naming organic compounds. The first thing you need to know is that level two material is incredibly important for level three organic chemistry. And right throughout the organic chemistry topic, we're gonna to be referring back to the level two content that you should have learned last year. In this video, we're gonna be covering naming organic compounds and isomers. So at the start of each point, I'll briefly touch on what you need to have known from last year. So to start off with, with naming organic compounds, at level two, we learnt all the prefixes which get matched up with the number of carbons. So for example, one carbon has a prefix of meth. We have five carbons have a prefix of pent, and so on. These are all listed in the table here. Now while this prefix dictated the number of carbons, how those carbons were bonded together and what extra molecules were added on is what type of compound it was. So that's how these seven different compounds came into play. And for each one of those, we needed to know the structural formula, how the atoms were actually bonded together, the molecular formula, what atoms were actually in the whole molecule as a total, and how to name it. So this might be how to name alkanes or each individual type, but also, as we can see in this example, how to name combinations of these compounds. So this is what we needed to know from level two. Now, if you're not familiar with all of this, do go and see the level two chemistry videos on organic naming compounds part one. But at level three, we're gonna look at five new compounds and every single one of these compounds will have a carbon with a double bonded oxygen attached to it. And you might know from level two that we've actually seen one compound that has this already. So this is the carboxylic acid. Now carboxylic acids have that structure where you have a chain of carbons, there's a double bonded oxygen attached to the last carbon, and a hydroxyl group or an OH group attached as well. Now we're gonna use carboxylic acids as an example to learn a little bit of notation before we get into this. The first of two that you need to know is R. R just means a chain of carbon atoms. It could be any length, doesn't matter what it is. So in this case, we know that we've got the critical ending of a carboxylic acid because it has the C double bonded O and an OH attached to it. And then we have R some length of carbon atoms that comes after it. Doesn't matter whether it's two or five or 10 or 10,000, it just means some length or some chain of carbon atoms. So that's what R means. The second thing we need to know is the Z group. And the reason we have this is because every one of our new compounds has a carbon with a double bonded oxygen. So the only thing that changes is what's on the other bond of the carbon atoms. So this Z group is gonna be the focus of everything we're doing for our new compounds. And for each of those compounds, we're gonna cover the structural formula, how the atoms are actually bonded together, how to name these new compounds, how to write out their molecular formula, what atoms are actually in there, and their general formula. It's the same as the molecular formula, but it will include this R, meaning that you could have any length of atoms in there, not just one specific example we've got listed. So to put these all out there, we've got five new types. And every one of these types, you'll notice, has a dash CO to start with. And that's because we've got a dash C with a double bonded O all of the time. It's just the Z group which is changing. Now Z isn't actually an atom, it's just a name for whatever else could go there. So in the case of a carboxylic acid, that was a hydroxyl group with an acyl chloride, that's a chlorine group. For an ester, it's an oxygen and another chain of carbons, and so on and so on as we go down the list. We're gonna cover these one by one. So the first example we wanna look at is acyl chlorides. For this, the extra Z group is a chlorine atom. So a structural formula could look something like this. We've got a chain of carbon atoms, and the N one has the C double bonded O with a chlorine attached for the final bond on a carbon atom. When you're naming this, the prefix will come first of all from the alkane you have at the start. So this is ethane because it has two carbon atoms, but instead of the E at the end, we rename it oil chloride. So combining those together would give us ethanoil chloride. So that's how you name acyl chlorides. Some of you may came across the name acyl halide, and this includes any of the halide atoms, or in our case, most commonly bromine, but for your level three exams, acyl chlorides are the only ones that are gonna come up. Next, we can write out the molecular formula for this one. So we've got our CH3 group, and judging from this table, we've still got our COCl group that we put on the end all the time for the molecular formula of acyl chlorides. Finally, our general formula just replaces that extra chain of carbons, in this case, just that one extra carbon, with an R. But we keep the ending, which is the COCl, a common ending on any molecular formula, so that we can know it's an acyl chloride. Now let's look at esters. The Z group on an ester is a little bit different. It has an oxygen, but because oxygen can have two bonds, it bonds to another chain of carbon atoms. 
And you'll see that because we've got our original R, some chain of carbon atoms. We've got another down here, which is another chain of carbon atoms. The dash up here just means it's different from the first chain that we had. So an ester uses a carbon and two oxygens to bond together two separate chains of carbon atoms. So a structural formula could look something like this. Here we've got a chain of three carbon atoms, which includes our double bonded oxygen, and that's attached to an oxygen, which is attached to another carbon chain, which is only one carbon in length. And in order to name that, we need to know that we're gonna have two carbon chains and we need to name them separately. So to start with, you name your secondary chain, which is the one without the double bonded oxygen. In this case, we've got a methyl group, and we end up with YL, which is methyl. And then the secondary part of the name uses your main chain, which is attached to the double bonded oxygen. In this case, we've got three carbons in here attached to the double bonded oxygen, and that's prop as its initial name. And we end it with NO8. So the full name for an ester would be methyl, because that's the first small chain, propanoate. So the molecular formula for this one would be the two carbons and the five hydrogens out here. We've still got our COO, and then we list the molecular formula for our secondary chain, which is just CH3. Now the general formula for this, you've got one chain of carbon atoms, your R, you've got your COO, which you'll write in the middle, same as up here, and then you do your secondary chain of carbon atoms, which in our case was CH3 for our example. So this is esters, where we have our double bonded oxygen, a single oxygen, holding together two different carbon chains. Next one we're gonna look at is an amide. Now an amide Z group is NH2. So we could do one example for this one here where we have a chain of four carbon atoms, our double bonded oxygen, and our NH2 group attached, replacing the Z group here. So how we name these ones is we add amide on the end of the name of the chain. So four carbon prefixes is but, and then we add amide. So it's butamide as the name. And the molecular formula for this one up here, we've got our three carbons and seven hydrogens on the extra chain. We've got our CONH2 on the end one here. And a general formula of R, because we could have any length of carbon out here and we'd still have an amide, and CONH2 on the end there. Now one thing that's a little bit different about an amide is we can have primary amides, which only has these hydrogen attached, but instead of a hydrogen, we could actually replace it with another carbon chain, say down here. This would be called a secondary amide because it has two carbon chains on it. Or we could etch a third carbon chain, and that would be called a tertiary amide. But as long as it has a C double bonded O right next to an N, it is still counted as an amide group. So when naming things in your exams, you'll only be asked to name a primary amide. At the most, you'll just be asked to identify an amide group if it's a secondary or tertiary one. Next is an aldehyde. Now an aldehyde's a little bit different in the fact that up until now, we've got atoms that aren't just carbons and hydrogens. We've got a hydroxyl group, chlorine, oxygen, an amide group. Now we've just got an extra hydrogen attached onto the end as the Z group. So it makes it a little bit more subtle. So a structural formula could look like this. A chain of four carbons, your double bonded oxygen, just a simple hydrogen added on the end. So this gets the prefix at the end, despite the misleading spelling of anal. So the prefix for this would be but, adding on anal, makes butanal. And once we've done this, the molecular formula, we've got our three carbons and our seven hydrogens, plus our COH, which is the extra part we add on to the molecular formula at the end. And as a general formula, we'd replace those three carbons and hydrogens up here with an R. So that's how we do aldehydes. Now, one thing to know with an aldehyde, the double bonded O is always on the end. Because if it's not on the end, we give it a different name, which is called a ketone. That's the next one here. So a ketone just continues on the carbon chain. And you'll notice it's not a different carbon chain. I haven't labeled it R dash. It's the same carbon chain that carries on. Just one of the carbons will have a double bonded oxygen attached to it. This is called ketone. And when you're naming it, it has its normal prefix and own at the end of it. So if we look at a structural formula like this, again, while it looks like we have a chain of four here, which would be but, it actually is a chain of five because this carbon chain carries on down. So here we have five, which is pentan, and then we add on the ending own, which gives us pentanone. So the molecular formula here would be still C3H7 because we still need to label the C double bonded O separately. Then we have CO and then our second lot of carbons, which in this case is just CH3. And as a general formula, we have R, CO, and it could be R dash or just a regular R. 
but we've got two chains on either side of the CO when we're actually writing it out as a molecular formula. So these are the five new different types of molecules you've learned for level three, in addition to all of the level two molecules that you still need to know. And remember, it's the Z group, which is always changing because every single one of these new ones has a C double bonded O attached to it. So we can break these up roughly into two different categories. We've got all of the ones up the top, which have interesting endings replacing their Z group. For example, a hydroxyl, a chloride, an extra oxygen and chain of atoms, an amide group or NH2 group. These are called acid derivatives, and they all act really similarly to each other. They have very similar properties. Compared to when we just have our regular hydrogens and carbons down the bottom here, they act similar to each other, but very different to this top group. Now I'm pointing this out because later on, this top acid derivative group will react very similarly to each other, but very different to the aldehydes and ketones. So just be aware that if you're talking about these new atoms and your Z group is not just a carbon or a hydrogen, then all of those things are gonna have really similar properties to each other. We'll cover that in a future video. But for now, let's go to part two, where we're gonna look at isomers now. To briefly touch on last year's stuff, you need to remember that isomers are compounds that have the same atoms, but they're actually arranged differently. So down here, in both cases, we've got three carbons and six hydrogens, but they're arranged and structured differently. So they're called isomers. Now, there's two different types of isomers we learned about. Structural isomers, which are also sometimes called constitutional isomers, and this is just when things are structured differently, and geometric isomers, and this only happens in alkenes or alkynes, things with double or triple bonds. And that's because this bond isn't flexible. So you either end up with two groups on the same side, which is called cis, or on opposite sides, which is called trans. These are geometric isomers, sometimes called stereoisomers. Now, if you don't know this or you'd like extra details on this, go to the level two organic chemistry video on naming compounds part two. This covers isomers in detail. But for now in level three, we're gonna learn about one new type of isomer called an optical isomer. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as an enantiomer as well. So an optical isomer is one that is a mirror image of itself. And this will only happen when we have one single carbon that has four different groups attached to it. So for example, if we look at butan-2-ol, here we've got one carbon and four different groups. None of them are the same. So if we write that out in a 3D diagram, and those of you who remember structure and bonding from level two, will know that if you do this and you hold this up to a mirror, you're gonna get the reflection of it here. Now the reflection and the original one cannot be superimposed over the top of each other. They are structured differently and they are not the same molecules, despite being incredibly similar. It's like your right hand and your left hand. They're mirror images of each other, but they're not exactly the same. That's what an optical isomer is. And remember, it only happens when you've got four different groups around one carbon atom. Now a question that comes up all of the time is how do you tell the difference? And surprisingly, they have exactly the same physical and chemical properties. However, the difference between them is that they will rotate a plane of polarized light in different directions. Now what that means is you get a plane of light or a sheet of light, you shine it through a whole lot of one type of isomer or one type of enantiomer, and it will rotate clockwise. You shine it through the other type of enantiomer, the other type of optical isomer, and it's gonna rotate it anti-clockwise, the opposite direction. So while they have the same physical and chemical properties, you need to know how to tell them apart. It's a question that comes up all of the time. You need to say that they rotate that plane of polarized light in opposite or different directions. So that's what you need to know for optical isomers. So here's what you need to know overall from this video. The first thing is what we covered in optical isomers, that they are mirror images of each other and it only happens with one carbon atom attached to four different groups. They have the same physical and chemical properties, however, the sentence you must remember is that they rotate a plane of polarized light in different directions. That's optical isomers. And at the start, we covered our five new compounds. And remember, they all had some chain of carbons, the R chain, where the end carbon had a double bonded oxygen and then some other group we called the Z group. Now that's different for every different type. And we already knew the carboxylic acid group, which had an OH or a hydroxyl group attached to it but we learnt the new acyl chlorides, which has a chlorine group attached to it, and how to name those. We learnt esters, how to name them, and the fact that the Z group is another oxygen, which then attaches to a whole other chain of carbons. And when we name that, remember, we name the carbon chain which does not have the double bonded oxygen first, and the one that has the double bonded oxygen second. For amides, we learnt that the Z group is an NH2, 
For aldehydes, we learnt that it has just a simple hydrogen on the end here. And a ketone is almost exactly the same as an aldehyde, but instead of this double bonded oxygen being on the very end of the chain, this double bonded oxygen was part way through the chain. So that's a ketone. And they loosely fall into two different groups where all of the acid derivatives, which are the ones which have something new attached as the Z group, all react really similarly to each other, whereas aldehydes and ketones with just simple hydrogens and carbons react very differently to that top group, but basically the same as each other. So we'll cover that in future videos. Let's look at some questions now. For this first question, we've got the structure of aspartamine given here. This is often used as an artificial sweetener in drinks. We need to identify the four different functional groups here that are circled and numbered and put them in this table. So one by one, starting with the first one, we can see we've got a C double bonded O, so it's one of our new molecules, and an OH group attached, a hydroxyl group. So instantly we know it's a carboxylic acid, or some of you may have learned this as a carboxyl group. For number two, when we look at that, we've got an NH2 group. Now it's very tempting to call this an amide group because we've just learnt that one. However, the carbon does not have a double bonded oxygen attached, so it's not an amide, it's in fact an amine group attached onto the end of this. For number three, we can see we've got another NH down here, and that is attached to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen. So that one there is an amide group. And number four, looking at this one, We've got a carbon with a double bonded oxygen that goes to another oxygen which attached to another chain of carbons. And if we remember, that one's called an ester. So that's how we do the first question. In the second question, we need to complete this table by drawing our structural formula for these named compounds. So to start with, let's look at these. We've got propanoyl chloride. Now the first thing we can do is do the main chain of carbons. Propan means that we've got three carbons, so we can draw those ones out then oil chloride is an acyl chloride. So it means we're going to have this double bonded oxygen at the end and a chlorine as the extra atom. So that's everything extra. Now we just add in hydrogens to make sure that every carbon has four bonds completely. And that is what your structural formula would look like. For the second one, we've got 3-bromo-pentan-2-ohn. So looking at this, the key chain of carbons is pentan. And pentan means we've got five carbons in a chain altogether. The next thing you'll notice is it ends in own. That means it's a ketone, which it just has a double bonded oxygen on one of the carbons. And it says here it's the second carbon because it's two own. Then we go to the final part, which is three bromo. So three bromo just means on the third carbon along, you have a bromine atom attached. So we can add that one on as well. Finally, we can add in the hydrogens so that all of these carbon atoms have four bonds each. So adding those on, that gives us our final answer. And finally, we can look at 2-methylbutanol. Looking here, we've got our key chain is bute, which means it's got four carbon atoms. The next thing we'll notice is it's got an ending of anal, which means it's an aldehyde. And an aldehyde means we've got the double bonded oxygen and a single hydrogen attached. It's one of the new ones we learnt in this video. Finally, we've got 2-methyl at the start, something we covered at level 2. So 2-methyl means on the second carbon atom, we have a methyl group attached. And with all of these new compounds, you want to count from the end that has the double bonded oxygen. So we go back one to number two carbon and add on a methyl group. Finally, like always, we'll fill up these carbon atoms with as many hydrogens as we need to get them up to four bonds each. So this would be your final answer for that part of the question. And this is how you name the additional compounds at level three.